So the overall question in the beginning of this lecture is going to be, does sex sell? And by sex, I mean sexy or sexual pictures and advertisers. Because sex is heavily used in advertisers. So does sex sell? So we know a lot of commercials nowadays use, try to address the emotion. So what about the emotion of arousal? Well, the problem with many products are that there are no convincing facts. There are nothing to say, there's nothing to convince you about this product. It's all about, for example, with whiskey, it's all about taste. And taste is basically a way to feel. You cannot discuss taste really, you cannot convince people this tastes better. Well, you can uh, to a point, but not in a commercial. So, even though you see an advertising, and even though you kind of, somebody tries to commit you with the feeling, there might still be some kind of central rooting. So if we go back to the Omega strategies, well, if somebody presents whiskey for you, now a bottle of Jack Daniels, what do you see? Well, as we know with the attitude approach, some things are going to be considered bad, some things are going to be considered good. So if we have the, uh, the beneficial orientation, well, I like the taste, it makes me feel good or something like that. We also have the avoidance approach. Well, I think this is too smoky or this is expensive. And this is where sexiness comes in. This is where arousal comes in. Because actually resistance can be distracted with sexuality. So the idea is if I kind of put in some sexy advertising, well, I actually do not consider the, the uh, bad things for me. The problems, I'm kind of too confused because apparently sexiness or this kind of arousal confuses me. It distracts my way of doing reasoning. Actually, it overbooks or kind of overloads the cognition. Like we, there's too many parallel processes at the same time. So it, it works as a distraction. And when distracted, apparently cliches and maxims can be very influential. Well, so it kind of taps into a rich source of meaning which can then be applied and you're not that critical anymore. So let's look at an example. This is just a normal whiskey ad. It just tries to communicate feelings. You gotta see, oh, this is all an old environment. It's just a feeling. Then there are the most sexy ads. We add some sex. The longer you wait, the better it gets. You see this sexy girl where she was young and she's older now. And you kind of get this cliche, the longer you wait, the better it gets. And apparently it could be very, very influential. And then. Of course, the first question that asks that pops to mind is, does it work? Well, do men really get distracted? The bold answer is, yes, they do. So, if you kind of look at where do men look the first at a sexy picture like this. You kind of blurred it a little bit. Well, over 30% of the time they actually look at the breasts and that they're the first place they look. So, they look at the breast, then the eyes or what she's looking at. So, She's not focusing. Women, on the other part, are concentrating on the face. So, what look the stats are? Well, mostly at the breast, mostly at the face. How much at the headline? Well, men look at it around 11% of the time. What about the logo? Well, the logo is down to 3%. So, basically, men are now distracted by this sexy woman. Women, well, Especially for the breast part, they don't look that much at it, but they look a lot at the face. How does she look? How does she f kind of feel? They look a lot at, at the picture down here. What is that? What, what's she doing? So the first quiz of today is, how many men do you think remember the sexy advertisement and brand better than the non-sexual? So there's the question, A, well, 10% less, B, 10% more, C, 20% more, or D, 40% more. So how many go for A? No one. How many go for B? One. How many go for C? Three. How many? Oh, so D, four, it's gonna be like 20. So 40% more remembers the sexy advertisement. And you couldn't be more wrong. Actually, 10% less remembers the sexy advertisement. They're distracted. They can't recall the brand. They can recall the sexy, sexy lady, but actually a lot less people, if you look at the stats for men, the sexual ad, 10%, around 10%, the non-sexual, well, actually 20%. 
So more men actually remember the ad. This is kind of ironically, or kind of ironic because, well, sex are used heavily in advertising. But there's one difference. How much did you like the ad? Well, twice as many men like the ad with the sexual content. So, and actually, how many would like to buy the product out of the, the, the guys who actually remember this? Well, that's actually 25%, that's a lot of people. So let's look at the ladies part. Well, actually, it's the same for them. They get distracted by the sexual, and I can tell you even more. For the correct brand recall, actually more than twice as many remembers the non-sexual ad for women. But they really don't like the sexual ad, the sexy ad. So that's interesting. So the point is kind of, well, distract with sex is kind of a way to avoid resistance and reasoning. But just sex distracts so much you can recall the brand, which is kind of a problem.